Greetings and salutations, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of Comic Talk. Uh, it's an exciting week this week. I'm here with Jeff, the comic guru. Um, and we're about to uh, talk about some of this week's highlights uh, and what to expect uh, for May the 30th. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram at MSI underscore comics underscore and underscore games. Um, and to like us on Facebook at My Secret Identity. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, this week, Jeff, we have Doomsday Clock to start us off. Tell, us, tell me a little bit about Doomsday Clock. All right. So this is, uh, this is a story that a, a lot of people have been looking forward to. Um, a lot of the diehards, though, um, and I have to say I'm one of those people, um, don't feel it's a necessary move uh, for DC. But what the story is, is the, the world of the Watchmen. You probably remember the movie. Yes, quite um, well. I don't quite know if well. You would have read the story or not, but no. Um, you know, just a, a, an absolute masterpiece, right? It, and as a diehard fan, I, I think it, it kind of stands alone. Um, they've tried to go back to visit this world a couple times. Um, they have did a poor job in the past, um, but back to the Doomsday Clock. This is the uh, the continuing story, or the merger of the. Watchmen universe into the main DC universe. Um, so it's, it's kind of a big deal character-wise. Okay, so I know the little bit I do know about Doomsday Clock and this specific event is this was kind of the launching point for Rebirth. Am I correct? So I, I know I did read Flash, the first Flash in the Rebirth, and I believe at the end there was the hint, and it was all leading towards this event. Absolutely. Um, now... Doomsday Clock is part of the bigger event, the, uh, the, the Rebirth event. Rebirth originally was supposed to be, a, I believe, a 24-month uh, story. Um, I think that's been pushed out a little bit. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's an overarching story. Um, you don't have to read every book to get the story of Rebirth. Um, it's just kind of the story where the entire DC mythos or the D- DC comic universe is moving towards. Um, Doomsday Clock is a big part of that. Suggestion is maybe uh, Dr. Manhattan may be responsible for the, the whole um, DC relaunch, the, the, the new 52. Um, so universe-wise, or universe wise, um, you know, he, he may be the big bad. Uh, well, I mean, that would be fairly interesting. I know that was kind of the... When that was revealed, that was a big moment, a big hype moment. Everybody all excited. I know we're five issues now, I think, into this, is it? Um, yeah, number five just came, comes out today. Comes out today of the twelve issue series. Um, do you like where the story is going? Is it is are you invested in it, um, or is it just kind of going with the motions and not really sure if it if it was worth the while to 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 go down this road? Well, it it, it it's all going to quote in the wash, right? Um, at this point, I don't see a lot of the the, the mesh happening just yet. Um, of, of course, we're getting the crossover characters that they are interacting with each other. Um, just not seeing how their how the Watchmen history is going to kind of fold into a current DC universe. Um, not not seeing that part of it yet. But that being said, you know um, DC, as far as uh, as their story writing over the last couple of years, have been getting just better and better and better over time. So you know if if they can pull this off, this will be a a massive massive event when it when it finally all comes together well there you go issue five out today uh could go ahead and show them the cover there and they'll be Absolutely. happy to take a look at that okay. on shelves today you can come in and pick that up so let's move on now um another big one this week is man of steel well the man of steel sorry absolutely and, and what makes this um kind of the big event is that this is the brian michael bendis um first Actual story. Um, we, we did see a, a short story from him in uh, in Action Comics one thousand, but this is this, this is him through and through, right? The, the whole comic. It's not just a snippet. We're getting what Brian Michael Bendis is setting up to be his first story arc for the, for our Man of Steel. So this is a number one. This is a number one, um, and, and, and like I said, it's a fairly significant number one. Um, it's the first Brian Michael Bendis um, comic for DC, so. 
you know, his, his, this is his, his headline. Um, he, now, he's been a major guy in, in Marvel up to this point. Okay, so that's what I was just going to ask. What, what is his background? So, um, Brian Michael Bendis is a, is a story writer, um, and, and he's done great things with, you know, Iron Man and, and uh, Riri Williams and, and all of these, these characters, um, you know, that, that are kind of near and dear to our heart, right? The things that are, are happening in the MCU, um, the movie universe, a lot of that is actually drawn from Bendis' work. Okay. Um, so he's kind of the, or he was, I was going to say, he is, he is the superstar, but he was the superstar um, at Marvel. Um, okay. You know, it was kind of, everyone bow down to the Bendis. And well, he, he has uh, some expectations to live up to then, especially with Superman. Um, now, is this separate from the rebirth? Is this its own thing? Own standalone story? Where nope. Th- this absolutely is taking part as part of the the, the rebirth storyline. Okay. okay. Um, Superman actually is a, a kind of a major player in the the move towards rebirth. Um, we had a new Fifty Two Superman who is not this Superman, um, and they as one does. Yes, absolutely okay. in the comic world, right? Yeah. Um, so the new Fifty Two Superman actually um, that they, they, they did a whole arc up to the start of rebirth. Uh, where they they killed that character off, um, you know he he got this major power, but when he used it, you know it then left him super vulnerable, and, and eventually, you know that that power combined with a couple other things um, actually ended up killing him. <clears throat> this is the Superman um, that fought Doomsday. Okay. Th- this is the Superman that that died, you know, in that big massive event, you know, the death of Superman. Th- this is him, right? He died, rebirth. Came back with the black suit. Um, you know, fast forward, his universe was destroyed when New Fifty Two came along. Uh, the convergence event. Um, I'm, I'm kind of just glossing over this. So yeah, so, no, I mean, quick, quick history. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so there was a convergence event that kind of took a bunch of different Gotham cities from universes that don't exist anymore, and this this being, this brainiac, kind of multiversal being. Um, had, had saved these and was kind of collecting Gotham's from, from different cities. Well, our Superman happened to be in that Gotham when it was snatched. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Now he's back. Now he's back. Lovely. Um, yeah, so after the Convergence event, we ended up with this Superman living in secret in the main universe because he didn't want to upset, right? This isn't his universe. Yep. Um, un- until that Superman died, and then he kind of stepped forward as... Stepped up to the plate. The world needs a Superman. As Superman does. So, would you say that this is a... as it Being a number one, it's a good starting point, right? If, if you're interested at all in Superman, and you know, you're know you not sure whether or not you can follow along with the stories, being a brand new story, this seems like a, a great spot for somebody to come in, Absolutely. take a look, Absolutely. and jump in. Now, w- with that said, every five or six issues is also a jump on point. Um, so the number one, obviously it stands out in everyone's mind as, a, as an amazing jump on point, and it absolutely yeah. is. Um, but, you know, from this point, the, this first story arc um, will probably take six issues. So issue number seven, again, becomes a major jump on point. And that's not saying you can't get in at number five or number four. You, you'll definitely be able to pick the story up. Um, but as far as, as each story event, uh, this being... being Kind of an iconic um, um, issue, you know, Brian Michael Bendis' first first DC comic. Yeah, I mean, to me, that really that Superman, the artwork on that, it definitely is reminiscent of uh, of what Superman should look like. The um, Superman that we would remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, now, with that being said, right, you know, er- everyone has their own Superman, right? There's, um, you know, the Superman from the '40s, and there are people that that that's their Superman, right? Yeah. There's, but this is. So someone will probably correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I think this version of Superman is the one who was around the longest, right? Yeah, he, I, he seems to he, be... He's kind of, yeah, like that, the, the 80s, 90s, Yeah, right? It, it, it's all, it's a, a couple decades of the same guy. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think most of us, or maybe the majority of us, view this as, as the Superman. Right on. Yeah. Right on. So, moving on. Uh, next, let's talk about the prelude to the wedding event that's going on in Batman right now. I know nothing about it. Um, I haven't really been following <laughs> along. 
Uh, so prelude to the wedding to me for a Batman story could mean a number of things. Let's let's set the record straight here. What is prelude to the wedding all about? Okay, so um, had a pretty major happening in Batman very recently. Um, Batman proposed to Catwoman. Um, Selena Kyle, Catwoman. Yes. Okay. Yes. The the. The good Catwoman. Okay. <laughs> for, for, for lack of a better word. Um, Prelude <clears throat> to the wedding. Give me the rundown. All right. So, um, Batman, Catwoman, going to get married. Right? Yeah. They, 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 they've agreed. Um, the comics have kind of been going towards this kind of Batman family idea a lot more lately. Um, really referencing, you know, the Robins as kind of being his surrogate children. And, and referencing that a lot more lately. So you, you've seen the build-up, right? The, the foreshadowing's been there. The big event happened. They're, they're, they're proposed. I shouldn't say the big event, because the big event will be the wedding. But yes, that's the big event, Jeff. The, the, <laughs> so the idea um, being that as they're going up to the wedding, um, you know, as Gotham has multiple villains, right, these need to be kind of dealt with, um, you know, by, by the wedding party. Yeah, so well, they? to be sure that they do not mess up the, the big day for the bride. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So this first one, um, they, they, they really kind of jump in with a bang, and they're going with Raz al Ghul. Against Robin. Against Robin, absolutely. Who is his grandson. I don't know if you would have known, known Didn't that. Didn't know that. Absolutely. Didn't know that. So Damian Wayne, yeah. the son of Talia al Ghul, which is Raz's daughter. Yes. Um, and Batman. To, to, to make a long story short, um, you know, he, he was supposed to be a surrogate body for his grandfather. Turns out he was a really awesome assassin, so they kind of scrapped that plan. We're not going to, you know, kill Grandpa off and put his soul into the little boy. Um, <laughs> Family issues. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Talia drops him off to Bruce. Bruce didn't know anything about him, right? Drops, kind of drops him off to Bruce. He's like, you know, you got to raise this kid now. You know, I, I got things to do because... Family She's issues. an assassin. Absolutely. Um, so that's a very, very basic overview. Of okay. That. I mean, you you seem to cover the key points. So um, that the big deal here is um, Robin, right? Of course, uh, facing Grandpa. Yeah. You know, and Robin not being too happy about the wedding in the first place, um, and then kind of having to defend the wedding against his Grandpa. Um, so it, it's less of a sword fight, more of a uh, uh, inner conflict character piece. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So now for this series, are they? Is each part going to be its kind of standalone story with a an overarching uh, arc? It, so it to seems speak? to be. It seems um, to be okay. So so this one is is kind of over and done with, right? I, I don't expect to see this story continued in. You know, the, the Nightwing issue. Okay, or, okay. Or Except like for that. some threads of the overarching, Absolutely. we're leading to the wedding. Okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. Alrighty. So now moving on to Spider-Man 800. Now is it, it's the amazing Spider-Man. And Absolutely. it's the go down swinging uh, portion of it. Um, so tell me a little bit about this. Well. A little bit about this. Uh, of course, it's 800 issues, right? Uh, That's a lot of issues, folks. We, we just came off of Action Comics 1000, yep. right? Which is, of course, the first comic to ever have 1,000 issues um, published for it. Okay, yeah. Um, Spider-Man... At being at 800, you know, no, not a number to, to sneeze at, right? He, he's, no, that's pretty significant. Yeah. I mean... You know, one of the original heroes, right? You know, yeah. And now he's up to uh, to 800 issues of, of Amazing Spider-Man. So the, the, the big deal in this is, of course, it's the conclusion of the story arc. Um, we have the Red Goblin story has, has been going strong. Everyone's been loving it. Um, you know, first appearances and, and, and kind of shocking revelations about... First of all, who the Red Goblin was, right? It, it, it's been a okay. That was a big a, reveal. It's been a major story. Okay. Um, and one of the reasons it's been a major story is because it's Dan Slott's last Spider-Man story. So he's the guy who's been writing Spider-Man for oh god, I, I don't I don't even want to say how long. Like a very very long time. He, he's been okay, the so, Spider Guy. So if Stan Lee's the grandfather of Spider-Man, that would make this fellow a a 
uncle, would you say, an uncle of the stories? Is, uh, is that... he, he, he may be a stepfather. At this a stepfather, point. okay. Yeah, like he's, well, that's not he's, a bad title right to have there, right? for like Spider-Man. He's, he, he's, he's a major part of, of what makes Spider-Man t- to be Spider-Man. Okay, so um, what's going on in this issue? What, what, what's the big payoff? We're, we're, we're right in the middle of a Red Goblin story. Oh, geez. Uh, I, how, how do I say this without, without spoilers? Yeah, this l- is... let's go light on the spoilers, Jeff. We... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because... And, and I've been biting my tongue because I, I read this yesterday. Yeah. Right? The comic's out today. Um, you know, sitting down playing, playing some hero clicks with some guys last night, so, so superhero-related yeah. people... Um, it was hard to keep my, my just tongue. Just the diary of the moth from, from happening. Oh, I, and cause okay. I want to talk about everything that's happened inside 800 and it's a, it's a fast paced story. Okay. Um, it's a big book. Like, I don't know if you can tell on camera there or not, but that's. Yeah. That's a pretty thick comic. Right? If, you, if you look at a, a comic book. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, it, there's it is a lot there. That's meaty. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so, it, and that's the variant cover. This is one of the variant This is one of the variant covers. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, so spoilers. I'm, 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 I'm trying getting, to say how, I'm how, getting a vibe <laughs> that this was probably your favorite of the, of the, the of releases. This week. Week. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. All right. So there you absolutely. go. Yeah. Jeff's stamp of approval on Spider-Man 800 <laughs> and we absolutely can do a video getting into spoilers. Uh, so when is this ending? Cause I know in the headlines, the big thing is, and you've done a video on it recently is the. The Marvel relaunch, one thing that I'm personally excited for is uh, a, a Spider-Man number one uh, t- to hop back in and, and kind of follow along. So is this, this isn't going to continue? Are, are we well, stopping at 801? Uh, th- th- this is 800. Yeah, 800. We, we are going to get an 801. We are getting an 801. Uh, and that is Dan Slott's last issue? The last issue. Absolutely. So so this is this is his his. Story that okay, did. and then eight oh one is like his farewell issue, right? Okay, um, I don't expect it to be a real, you know, heavy story or anything because it, it is going to be only one issue, right? He's got to start and stop whatever yeah. his his last comic will be, but this is what's going to go down as as his last as story, his swan song. Absolutely. Well, I mean, when you're talking like even in comparing it to television and series finale of television shows, generally that it's not the last episodes that that's the big send off. It's the second last episode and the last episodes used to kind of close up loose ends, Absolutely. say goodbye to these characters. So if you're really looking forward to the, the new Spider-Man that's starting and kind of want to get a little bit of history as to where it was at, this seems like a good point to kind of, to go in and, and absorb the, the big payoff, the big send Most send-off. definitely. Okay. Most definitely. Um, this book, if, if you haven't been reading Spider-Man to this point, it has a really easy entry point. Um, so even though it's not the first part of the story, um, you know, you're, you're getting into this, this well, the first chapter's actually called Crawling Through the Wreckage. So you're jumping into something that you already know is the end of something. Okay. Right? And well, it, so it's a very easy... Easy entry point to this issue. Okay. Um, and again, I said it, it, it's a huge issue. A lot of stuff happens. Sweet, sweet. And sh- you have a, another cover there. I think that's I just do. the. Uh, and actually, th- this is my, my, whoops. This is my uh, favorite of the, the issues that we got in today. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Yeah. That's a pretty um, pretty slick uh, I, cover. I, and, and spoiler, don't want to look at that part where he's in the black <laughs> suit. But. Alrighty. Well, I mean, if they put it on the cover, that's on them. We can't control that. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. So moving on to the last highlight of the week, um, Star Absolutely. Wars Lando. Star Wars. Ton of Star Wars fans. Here. There is a lot of Star Wars fans. I hear there's a couple. There, yeah, more than, more yeah. than a few. Um, so Star Wars is, is something that we kind of try and keep on the shelf. Yep. Um, as, as a franchise as a whole, that, that story... This is uh, right from, from Marvel, right from Disney. Yep. Um, this is canon? So all this stuff is canon. It is canon, folks. This is... Okay. That's what we're told. All right. This is, this is canon stuff. So these are the stories, of course, that you're not seeing on the screen. Yep. Right? These are, are kind of taking the place of the old extended universe. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one is about our good buddy Lando. Lando. Childish Gambino. And Donald Glover. If you can tell by the, the art here, we're getting a young Lando. But this isn't Empire it, Strikes Back Lando. No, this is Lando from Solo. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
right? So that, that, that's the arrow that we're in anyway. Um, now, I, I seen Solo, and not getting into any spoilers, uh, I can easily say that Lando was the most enjoyable part of that movie. Okay. So it makes sense that they're going to try to cash in on that and... And, you know, even the actor that plays him is big in pop culture and everything right now. So, cashing in on that, putting his face on a comic book and putting it on the shelf makes a lot of sense. Does the story in this particular issue warrant it existing? Well, now, I didn't see Solo yet. Okay. Um, you know, I know, shame on me, right? Yeah, um, you're not I, I, I should be out there and, and on yeah. Thursday night watching all the new movies. But, you shouldn't. I no, should not. <laughs> Come on, you're not helping me here. Okay. Well, Trying to go to movies. All right, yes. Anyway, Let's get Jeff to the movies. Get, yeah, there we go. Go fund me. <laughs> um, as Danielle cracks up behind the camera. <laughs> so, this, for someone who hasn't seen, seen Solo, yeah. um, you know, stepping backwards to a, a younger Lando, this is exactly what I expected. This okay. is a space cowboy, right? Yeah. And, and this is the space cowboy story. Um, fairly predictable, right? Yeah. You know, uh, a woman gets him in trouble, and here we go. Here we go. We, the, we start the Lando story. Um, so is this going to continue? Is Lando going to have his own series? Is this like the Poe series? What, what's well, the, now, the future? This one will continue. I don't, it doesn't say on the cover how many issues it is, but it is... A mini series. Well, it does say our last issue there on that last page. If you go back, the next issue is next issue. June twenty seventh. Yeah. All right, so they're but about a month apart. But it doesn't. Well, yeah. Yeah. A- absolutely. Most comics are. Okay. Um, there are there are a few that are bi-weekly. Uh, bi-weekly. Okay. Um, a couple like the, the Superman should have mentioned what is a weekly. Oh. Um, there you so go. It's going to come out weekly. Um, but yeah, th- this is your standard comic. It, it's going to come out monthly. Okay. Um. Like I said, it is a miniseries. Uh, I don't know how many. So either five so, or six. Okay, yeah. So it's continuing in some form. You will get a, an issue two next month. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Alrighty. So that kind of clears up our, our week's highlights for uh, for this week, for May 30th. Everything you saw today, uh, you can get in store. Uh, you'd be sure to check out our subscription service as well. Uh, we do pull comics for you. You don't have to worry about... Them not being there when you come in, you're busy, live, live a busy life, doing your job, you have places to be, people to see, and you don't need to be here every day. Absolutely. And we'll make sure you get what you need. I'm going to interrupt you there for yeah, a minute. Yeah, no, jeez. The this is new produce show. magazines are in. Oh, um, yes. So, come on down the store. Uh, you, you don't have to buy one. Um, th- th- this is a big thing. Guys, we bring this magazine in for, for you guys to look through. Um, so... Look through it, right? Take your time, sit down at the back, relax, see what's coming up, and uh, if there's something interesting there, let us know. Your other option, of course, is uh, previewsworld.com, yep. um, which is the, the website for this magazine. And if you see anything you like there, let us know. Yeah, and if, if you're not sure about something, whether or not we have it in stock, uh, just send us a message on Facebook. Uh, we're pretty quick to respond to those, so send us a message. We'll make sure, and we'll check to see if we have it, and if we don't, we'll, we'll try to accommodate it and see if we can get it for you. Um, so that's pretty much it for this week. Absolutely. Uh, is there any final thoughts? Uh, we know that Spider-Man's your, your pick this week, Yeah. Uh, so um, that's going to be tough to beat. Uh, is there anything that we didn't cover today that, that you'd like to give a shout-out to? Oh, geez. Of, of what came out today, May 30th? What came out today? Um... You know, just just my X Men. Your X Men, um, I'm, I'm uh, a big big X Men fan. Yeah, I saw a couple X Men um, gold back there. And absolutely, yeah, got yeah. Annual and, and some stuff. So there, there's some other, some other good stuff coming out too. Um, trying to think in indie titles. What uh, what was out today? I, I, I saw there was a saga. There's a couple. Of, that's right. Yeah, a couple of new issues of a saga. So and that's a that that seems to be like a like, I don't know. How big it is? It seems like a cult classic almost. Well, it's it's an award winning comic okay. every year, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they're always pushing the envelope of of It's the critical darling. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. So there's lots to check out. Uh in closing, guys. Make sure that you like and subscribe uh to our YouTube channel. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh we're trying to do these every week and uh help bring this type of information to you so you can listen or watch as you do things around the house and you don't have to come down and uh, you know what you're looking for when you get here. Uh, so, so now you've said you're, you're going to do this every week. Yeah. Uh, originally it was going to be twice a week. 
Are well, you, are you scaling this back? We'll talk later, Jeff. No, okay. We'll, okay. We're not scaling it back. We'll talk later. He, anyway, he might be fired. We're not scaling it back. No. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So uh, it's been our pleasure, and enjoy the day. <laughs>